for 300. Historical moment. That's it! Holy cow, what a win ending! A strikeout gets his 300th career win, and I tell you, this is really an exciting moment. Consecutive game hitting a home run takes the ball. Yeah, that Savella play might be the, the play that he says two doubles. Hey, did he get all of it? Did he? Holy cow, he did it! Opposite field. Holy cow. And the fans One of the best announcers in, in baseball, Phil Rizzuto. And tonight. Folks, welcome to Talking Baseball Live with me, Sal Angeletti. We're here at HamiltonRadio.net, Iron Horse Film Studio. My co-host, Tara McClaskey. Yes, and you hear the wonderful Phil Rizzotto in the background calling some calls tonight, folks. We're taking you back in time. I mean, Phil called some of the best. Fastball hit deep to right. And of course, Rizzuto started with Mel Allen in the booth, and then it was uh, Bill White, Frank Messa on the uh, picks 11 side. Let me tell you, folks, baseball has come a long way on on television, on radio, and now uh, Facebook's been selling uh, shows and all this other stuff. And let me tell you, we're going to go back in time, like I said. Uh, if people saw the page, uh, I had posted pictures of uh, of Mel Allen, uh, Bill White, Phil Rizzuto, Frank Messer, of course. On the Mets side, you had Bob Murphy, Lindsey Nelson, and Ralph Kiner. You had Monday Night Baseball. You had the, the two best guys on ESPN. Uh, and, of course, I'm forgetting names already. John Miller and Joe Morgan. There you go, John ESPN. Miller. John, let me tell you, I love those that crew. John John Miller called. I liked it uh, when they used to do the home run derby together. Yes. That that was the best. Uh, then of course you had your uh, Jack Buck and Jack then, Buck, Tim McCarver, and Tim McCarver. And let me tell you, folks, like I'm saying, baseball has come a long way. And I'm going to read just a couple of things right here. In 1953, ABC executive, uh, who uh, later on created Wide uh, Wide World Saturday Game of the Week, uh, was uh, TV's first sports uh, network uh, series at the time. Now, in a April of 53, he went out and uh, he's out to sell uh, sell out uh, team rights uh, with the Indians, the Athletics, whatever. Uh, he wanted to start, you know, broadcasting baseball. And uh, MLB didn't want him anywhere in a 50-mile radius, any stadiums, this guy. So what they did back then was, uh, in 1959, they did the best uh, three playoff series uh, back then. And let me tell you, this, and I was reading all of this and, and how, it, how it all got started with Monday Night Baseball, you know, from the 60s. ABC wasn't really showing that many. There weren't too many uh, networks showing any games. They 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 called you know, ABC was like a small. ABC actually paid five point seven million dollars to a do a Yankee game, and a Philly, cover all Yankee and Philadelphia Philly games at the, at the time. 
in the 70s under the initial agreement with ABC, NBC, and Major League Baseball paid $92.8 million. ABC paid 12 and a half per year to show 16 Monday night uh, baseball games, World Series, and an All-Star game. So it was... It was weird how all this came about and how Monday Night Baseball started. I mean, I'm going to whisper a few of the, uh, if you give me a second, I got to find it in my notes here. Here, at, at the time, between 1953 and 1954, the Saturday afternoon game of the week, it was called. Your announcers were Buddy Blattner, Dizzy Dean, and Gene Kirby. Okay, Dizzy Dean's the only guy I know because of uh, he was a pitcher. Uh, the, in the uh, 1959 National League tiebreaker game, George Bell and Bobby uh, DeClany uh, called it. And this is where Jack Buck started. In 1960, the Saturday afternoon game of the week, was with Jack Buck and uh, Carl uh, Erskine. You had the 1965 then Saturday afternoon game of the week. And you had Tommy Hendricks, Keith Jackin, Jackson, Jackie Robinson was a baseball announcer. Warren Spahn was part of that uh, team. And then y and you had uh, from 1976 to 1989, it was called the Monday night and Thursday night baseball game of the week at the time. So Lou Brock was in it in 1980. Howard Cosell did it from 1976 to 1985, the Monday night game. Don Drysdale was from 78 to 86. Bob Gibson was there for two years. Keith Jackson was there from 76 to 82 and then came back in 86. Jim Lampley. Uh, 1977 to 1980. Tim McCarver was there from 83 to 89. Al Michaels. Yes. He was good. 76 to 89. Then Joe Morgan was in that from 88 to 89. Jim Palmer, another great Oreo pitcher from 78 to 89. Uh, Steve Stone. You remember Steve Stone? Yes. He did it from 82 to 83. The Uke Man. Bob Uecker from 76 to 82. Earl Weaver did it for two years from 82 to 84. Uh, Bill White was in it for a while from 77 to 78 when the Yankees were in the World Series. Werner Wolf did it from 76 to 77. Uh, Gary Thorne joined the team in 89 when it was Thursday Night Baseball. Uh, other Monday Night Baseball Notables were uh, Jim Cotton, Reggie Jackson. And now the last time ABC actually covered a game was 1980, uh, 1995, I believe. Uh, yeah. Game five, uh, that was it. <clears throat> that was the last one, yes. Yeah, so uh, then, of course, with all the other stuff, you had Lasorda, Billy Martin, Brent Musburger, Tom Seaver, and Leslie uh, Visser at the time was the first female, I believe, with uh, on ABC. You know what I love? Like we were talking about, you know, all-time announcers, uh, your, your Philly guys, and then you had the Yankees and Mets, uh, all the, the pregame stuff, you know, and Rizzuto and them. It was it was great. Rizzuto would uh, be gone and uh, if it ever uh, showed anything. Yeah, Dan Danny's right. So when, a when uh, ABC did... I guess that was it for them. Uh, ESPN did take over. Yeah, the, the aftermath of all that was uh, after losing its Major League Baseball broadcast rights, uh, counter-programming uh, against Fox's postseason, uh, with ABC being sold to Disney in 1996, uh, ESPN uh, then started to take over then. So... Uh, then MLB Network came in, and I think I like ML. Uh, ESPN lost sight of uh, baseball after a while. Yeah, because uh, I always watched. Uh, 
I love ML MLB. Uh, does a great job. Then you have all Fox. You have right. Yankees went to CBS for a bit after Channel Eleven, then went back to Channel Eleven again. Because I would, I would. Uh, what I remember from uh, ESPN was they, I think, it was starting in eight, 1989 or 1990. They started Sunday Night Baseball. Right. So, so they would have a game at 8 o'clock. And yeah, they did Sunday and Wednesday. That's when right. uh, Morgan and uh, what's right. his name was on. Yeah. So from 7 to 8 o'clock, you would have your uh, baseball tonight before the game, go over to all the Sunday afternoon uh, uh -huh. highlights and all that stuff, and then – they would also have it uh, during the weeknight, too. Uh, they would have yeah. it during, at 10 o'clock and then again at, say, 12 o'clock, 12.30 for the late game. What, what, yeah, what I missed was uh, during the, those days is you had – you didn't have a lot of night games. You showed you, your playoffs during the day and at night and the right. World Series. And right. then everything became nightly. Nobody wants it, you know. Go old school. I think they started doing that uh, just recently, right? What? What's that? Time changes make the afternoon game uh, with, right now with all the added right. playoffs and stuff. And then before um, MLB Network uh, came along, they were still doing it uh, seven days a week. Baseball tonight. Now, ESPN only does shows it on Sundays. Uh, that's not for some for some reason. I don't think that's right. They're giving all the privileges because now MLB has a show. MLB Network is on baseball. To, um, MLB Tonight goes all the games seven days a week. Yeah, Fox is five days a week during the week. So ESPN lost out to Fox and MLB Network, and maybe they don't care about it. But they took away from the from the money pit that they yeah. had, and they just gave it to other people. Right, so the good, one of the guys who is on, on uh, MLB Network now does the show with uh, Kevin Millar. Yeah, Chris Rose. He used to be with ESPN. Yeah, he's... Uh, he started with ESPN. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, with MLB tonight. He's with MLB Network and uh, Fox. That's what... Uh, that's what um, Smoltz is. Smoltz is on Fox and MLB Network. Um, Dar Ron Darling... Is on MLB Network, SNY, and he does the Sunday TBS game with uh, Turner. Right, and and what I love about uh, game calling now is you have guys who played the game in the booth, and I'll say it again. I think, don't get me wrong, I'm a Yankee fan, and I think Michael K was better in the radio booth with Sterling, but that's not my call. Uh, that's right, Harold Reynolds, another ESPN guy. But uh, if you if you look at it, even on the Mets side, if you don't have those baseball players along with the regular, the, these guys are lost. Like uh, with O'Neill, and uh, you have uh, Coney, and then you have uh, all the other guys. And if uh, – do any of the Philly guys have uh, MLB players with them, though, uh, I guess, as announcers? Uh, the only people I know, uh, the older crew was only um, Harry Callis and Richie Ashburn. The mm. crew now with uh, Tom McCarthy is they switch with Ben Davis, okay, John Crock, okay, and then every once in a while they'll filter in and – uh, Mike Schmidt on the weekend series at home for the home games, mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll do Jimmy Rollins on the road games. It, it's a good mixture, like I said. It's 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 good to have MLB players, you know, play the game with you in the booth because it it gives the right. gives a different view of what's going right. on on the field. Right. But back. Uh, before the, it was MLB players, <clears throat> I'll give an instant. I'll give two scenarios: uh, Philly scenario and then uh, the Mets. So the going up and before the players, uh, I did the uh, analyst after the, uh, the other guys did a play-by-play. -play. It would always be Richie Ashburn with Harry Callis doing play-by-play. -play. Commentator was Richie Ashburn. Then they would leave after the third inning. They would do the radio side for three innings. Right. 
And then you would have your, um, I can't think, uh, before, uh, after uh, they brought in Chris Wheeler, you would have, um, crap, you have, uh, oh, man, I can't think of it. Um, before they brought in Chris Wheeler, Richie Ashburn would stay through four through six, and then they would have another announcer to take over Harry Kaus's spot, and then Harry Kaus would do the radio for three innings. Mm. And then after that, then uh, they were done, Richie, um, Harry Kaus would be back on the radio, no, back on live in the seventh inning, and then he would go back to the radio. That's, uh, now, um, for the Mets, for the, uh, I think it was innings one through nine in the early years, it was always, it was Ralph Kiner and Tim McCarver. Right, yeah. And they didn't have nobody come in in the third inning. It was always those guys, one through nine. Right. And then later, Gary Thorne came in. But I don't know if uh, they were still uh, with Kiner and McCarver was still with uh And then you had, then you had you know, like, I, I, I used to love uh, Kiner's corner, and he used to do all that other stuff. You know, Ralph, Ralph was a very good ball player with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh you know, fans, the usual call in number is 609-807-2492. And you could call in and give us your thoughts. Who Who is your favorite baseball announcer, uh, the call games? Who did you enjoy listening to? Uh, you know, there's so many guys out there oh, and ladies It came now. back to me, uh, Andy Musser. It came back to me. And uh, so many guys went from the field to the booth, and of course, uh, Bobby Mercer was one of them. Mercer was uh, was great. He had joined uh, Rizzuto in the booth. You had Tom Seaver for a while in there. Uh, you had a lot of great guys. You know, there's a mixture. A Rod is in the booth now. A Rod's just like I said. You got guys who played on the field that were in the booth. And then uh, let me uh, give a shout out at about 6:45. We're going to have uh, Jake uh, Robinson from the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network. Let's give a shout out to the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network and the uh, their community and the fans uh, listening in and those group of people out there in uh, South Carolina. We want to say hello, and how is everybody? And uh, welcome along. And, uh, it's great to have everyone here. Why are giving out shout-outs? Also wanted to give a shout-out to our boys in the back, Gene, Monk, and Ruben, for the light and audio that they give us every week. Can't do it without them, so we'll give them a shout-out, please. Of course, always. So, uh, getting back. Uh Aroldis Chapman has uh, tested positive. Is another another uh, negatory in in the air. So I don't know. It, like I, we were talking about last week, you know, does it get better before it gets worse? Yeah. Or I don't, does it get worse before it gets better? Yeah, I don't know. They didn't say how long he's gonna be out. Uh, it, it all depends. Right now, he's out. Who knows for how long? Uh, yes, Joel Pui got signed yesterday. He's now an Atlanta yeah, Brave. Now, why? Now, why? You see, now that's a small move. Because McHark with Mar- 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 is uh, opting out. There's your right fielder right there. Uh, for you Mets fans, sorry to well, say, they, they could have they could have uh, thrown him in as a DH as well. Possible, but he could play right field. For you Mets fans, if you haven't heard, Jacob DeGrom is out for a time being. Don't know for how long. There is, he went for MRI today. There is stiffness in his back. So hopefully he's not out too long because that's going to affect the season now with only 60 games. That throws everything. That's another shoot. good call. That's it. Thank you, uh, John. Tony Kubek was uh, another announcer. Yeah, for the Yankees. Yeah. Another great announcer. Uh, my friend Paulie Macchia from Staten Island 3. Paulie, congratulations on your retirement on your 27-plus years for the sanitation department. 
thank you for your great service, and it was always a pleasure working with you. Uh, how do you like? How do you like? Uh, you probably heard uh, when you were growing up. You probably heard uh, Marty Brenneman. How do you like his son Tom? I think he's a good. I think he calls the game pretty good. Tom yeah, Brenneman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all know how everybody feels about Joe Buck, but uh, but uh, you know, Joe Buck. You know, he he did a nice thing. He he said what his father said uh, during one of the games. You know, yeah. and we'll see you tomorrow night. And then. Uh, of course, you always got the other guy. What's that? Uh, oh, my God. I'm getting bad with names. See what happens at the age of 50? What guy? The other, the other guy. What? With that buck did it with? Oh, he does. A, no, he does a lot of. Uh, he's with MLB Network now. And he does a lot of. Uh, bio, uh, Biographies about baseball. Bob Costas? There you go. Bob Costas. Costas is great. He knows everything. Yeah, he started real early with NBC in the early 80s. So he's been uh, he's uh, he's been there for Costas a while. Costas is a great... He's great. He just... I mean, he, did, he did a lot. And let me tell you, as baseball announces, there's a lot of Yankee haters... Uh, who you hated the Yankees? Joe Morgan. He hated doing Yankee games. Here's another. Uh, do, here's another old school uh, Yankees announcer. If you remember this guy, do you remember Dwayne Stats? Oh, of course. Yeah, he started with the Chicago Cubs. Statsy. And then he uh, went to the Yankees, and now he does uh, put uh, play by play for the Rays. Yeah, you know, Dwayne Stats. Uh, there's somebody else, uh, another former Yankee announcer does another team. The Dodger games. Oh, yeah, uh, Charlie Steiner. Yeah, Steiner Niner. Yeah, he was an uh, ESPN, uh, ESPN Sports Center uh, anchor. Who else do we got? Who else, folks? Come on, fans. Call it in. Call it in. Who are your favorite announcers? Come on. And... Before he was uh, co before he was uh, doing games with the Reds with his dad, Tom Brenneman actually started with the Chicago Cubs. Ah. So he was he would be with Harry Carey and uh, Steve Stone. Because when we were growing up, that with being cable, I would get WGN, so I would get all the Chicago Cub games before they had the light to it. All right, here here we go with the yeah. Uh... They would play at 220. Well, John Gonzalez, hold on. He's got his favorite announcers were Kurt Gowdy, Dick Emberg, Hal Cosell, and Jim Jim Sampson. Yeah, too early for wow. me. Too early for my. Yeah, for we us. got uh, former Yankees. You had uh, Mel Allen, Red Bobber, and Phil Rizzuto. You had Allen with Red Bobber and Jim Woods. Uh, Jerry Coleman came out to the. Came on with them in '63, uh, and they have it all, you know, listed as color commentators: as Coleman, Rizzuto, Red Bob, and Mel Allen. Uh, Joe Gradiola Sr. with Jerry Coleman. Uh, he came on on picks in 1966. Uh, Whitey Ford called a few games uh, with Messer, Jerry Coleman, and Rizzuto. He was there for a bit. Uh, where did the Bill White came? It was 1971. It was Whitey Ford, Bill White, Frank uh, Messer, and Phil, uh, Phil Rizzuto. That's a, a old school. Nothing like the old school, uh, John. Nothing like old school. And that's why we're going back in time tonight. Old school. Oh, there's one guy I forgot. Here we go, Fran Healy. Yeah, Fran he, Healy was an. Uh, he would did he didn't match too. Yeah, he Fran Healy, did. another Met Yankee. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I the booth started getting crowded in '83, Mel Allen came back. You had Mel Allen, Fran Healy, Bill White, Messer, Rizzuto, and Mercer. I think uh, Fran Healy all did. Uh, Jim Cott came in in '86. 
When they when the Mets didn't have where Billy Martin, oh Mickey Mantle called a few. When the Mets didn't have their games on uh, WWOR Channel Nine, right. it was a caucus. I think they were also on Sports Channel. But yeah, here they were: Seaver, Tommy Hunt, and Lou Pinella. It was in there Al Troutwig? Can't forget Al. Dwayne Stats was with Tony, Tony Kubek. That's when they came onto the MSG network. Yes. Don't forget before yes. Uh, uh, yes, there is no minor league baseball this year, unfortunately. And then uh, Kenny Singleton came in with Jim Cott and Al Troutwood. Susan Waldman was on for a bit there in 1999. Uh, oh, eight, 98 as well, 97. Uh, Rick Cerrone. Okay. Remember him. Singleton's been there. Uh, McCarver came in in uh, two... Th- no, when did McCarver? Hold on. McCarver came in in uh, 99 with the Yankees. So the Yes Network is uh, started in 2002. Yeah, because after... Then they went to CBS TV after the M- uh, After MSG, they went to uh, Fox 5. Right. Guys, you have a phone call. All right. We got a phone call. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you read me? Yeah, we can read you. What's up, fellas? What's, What's up? On? Not much. I, uh, I don't know. I, I just wanted to chip in with, I don't think there's anyone better than Sterling. Oh, yeah, on the, on the radio side, yeah, the, they, there's so the many TV, announcers. TV's done. T- TV's done. There's no more TV announcers. Gary Cohen was great, but he went to radio, and that's it. I mean play-by-play guys. I don't mean, you know, color commentators. Play-by-play. Okay. I don't, I don't like the TV guys anymore. Michael K is terrible. I actually don't mind Ken Singleton. Well, like we were talking about, if you think about it, if, if without without the... Guys who played ball, they're, they're lost. See, Michael K was with the Yankees on TV since 2002. Singleton, I like Singleton, but he, all right, he's an ex-player. I like I like Costas because every once when he does a game, he's either with. Uh, Smoltz or Jim Cotton in the booth. Let me tell you something. The Yankees, the Yankee booth is. And then for a bit, you got Jim Cott, Singleton, Mercer, O'Neill. David Justice was in there for a bit. Al Leiter and John Flaherty. Girardi was there for a bit. Too many people. Yeah, before he, yeah, before he went to the Marlins, right? Yeah, and all these guys were all ball players. You know. So they help, they help along. The, and then the Yankees got, when they were off of, hey, look at this. I forgot they were on WWOR for a bit. They yeah, weren't for a while. For, they a went, for a little bit, they went to 9 and the Mets went to 11. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So after the Yankees got off of CBS TV yeah. in 2004, they went to WWOR from 2005 till about 2014. Oh, so they were on channel, yeah. And then went back to picks in 2015. Yeah, I, my best memories of that were uh, Rizzuto and Bill White. Oh, yeah, when Rizzuto said, I'm Bill White, and he said Rizzuto was the... Always talking about his wife and uh, Cannoli's. Yeah, yeah, Paul, was... Paul Alden was another guy. <laughs> Spencer Ross, yeah. oh, my God. I remember Spencer Ross. Spencer Ross used to call a lot of the horse so, racing. So you mentioned before the Phillies used to have those announcers that went back and forth. Didn't Marv Albert used to do that with the Rangers hockey? Who? Marv Albert with Rangers hockey. Marv Albert was all over the place. Marv Albert used to do uh, he used to do the Nick games. Any, I think anything at the Garden he did. He did Nick games, yeah. and he also did uh, football. Well, he said he did the Rangers too. I'm pretty sure he went between TV and, and radio. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long he did the Ranger games because now uh, Sam Rosen. I know in the late '80s, Sam Rosen did a Ranger games, 
But I know. Yeah, but they they had they they had a big thing in '94 when they won the cup. They they brought in Marv Albert for one one period, as a as a memento type of thing to uh you know, because he's part of the history. So he must have had a pretty big role. Yeah, that's that's what I remember doing all those Nick games was uh, Marv Albert before he got in trouble. He yeah, had that job Mike for Green, years. Mike Green too. <laughs> well, look at it. John Sterling has now been calling Yankee games for 31 years. Yeah, because he left when he left the Hawks. Yeah, oh, and last yeah. year was the first time he left. Uh, he, he missed a few games. Yeah, because of his health. And he's the only guy yeah. calling the game, and they consider Susan Waldman a color analysis. So, basically, Sterling is uh, has been by himself since 2005. Since uh, you, I have uh, go, 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 come on, come on. since I have uh, both oh, Yankee fans here oh, with Sal and uh, Sal next to me and uh, Danny on while you're on the phone, do you think yeah. next week when they uh, are in D.C., do you think he's at the stadium or do you think he's going to be doing it from his house? Who's that? Sterling because of his health. Uh, I I I I, I got to imagine him being at the stadium. Mm-hmm. I think he'll be at the stadium. He, he's a lifer. He's Vince oh? Scully. He, Who's that? He's on mission time. Yeah, Paul, Paulie just said there was a time Rizzuto made a call, and he said shot hit the center field and said curveball foul. No. The best Ralph kind of call I ever heard was slides into second with a stand-up double. No, probably not, yeah. You heard me? Yeah. Anyway, I got a bad connection. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later, and I'll definitely see you next month. Oh, yeah, don't forget the schnitzel house in Brooklyn. We're going to make that announcement. Dude, it's, it's five minutes from my house. I'm there. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. All right. I'll talk to you next week. All right, Danny. Bye, buddy. Bye. Anybody else with a... Me, sounds like I'm in a in a in a phone booth with the uh, with Superman. Uh, anybody else? Six zero nine eight zero seven two four nine two. Baseball has come a long way with with TV and just think of all the things we use now: the cell phones, the iPads, and this and that. And you ain't seen any of this stuff in any of the dugouts anytime soon. So, good luck, Boston and Houston. So. Uh, on to better and bigger things now. Uh, I want everybody out there, my Brooklynites, my Staten Islanders, people from Jersey who want to come, write the date down, August the 21st, 2020, Schnitzel House, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. This show will be there live. We are back on the road for one show so far. Others hopefully to follow. So August 21st, we are live at 6 p.m., but we will be there at 5, setting up maybe 4.30, quarter to 5, around there, 5 o'clock. We will do a meet and greet. Hopefully my wristbands will be in a mail with the show name on it. I will have orange ones, navy blue for Yankee and Met colors because that's who's playing the Yankees versus the Mets. And uh, we will have them in adult and kid sizes. So if you're bringing the kids with you to eat or just to watch the show and have a beer or two, that's where we'll be. And I want to thank Fred Irvine uh, for letting this lovely thing happen with the show. And uh, give a shout-out to the Miracle League family, Dan. We're ready as well. We're going to do the show on the field over there in uh, Mercer County. Do a Zoom thing with the kids. Uh, I miss all of them. Hopefully, you're right there. Yeah, I'm good. No, oh, what happened? I don't know. Could be uh, this orbit from the super, maybe the wing flu. I have no idea. Lovely. I have no idea what's stuck. Maybe you wouldn't you? If it, you ever lift a box and it and like scrapes your arm, you get the mark from the box. Yeah, it could. Be. Oh, I hated yeah, that. Yeah, it could have been from work. Did I ever actually realize? 
Now, one thing on the sanitation, I, I lifted it. There was a ceiling fan in the back, or right. it was just not a back, and the, the tip of the fan caught me in the knee. I'm just walking around, and all of a sudden I feel something wet. I have blood coming out of my on my pants, and I'm like, I went to the hospital and got a little stitch. It was the first time I got the stitches in my, in my knee. But the old school, let's go old school. Who's, who's out there, old school baseball fans? Let's hear it. Who are your announcers before our guest caller comes in? Guest caller tonight. No, not Jake from State Farm, but it's Jake from Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network. We want to give a shout out to them. A shout out to all the local businesses out there who were getting ready to do the indoor dining and somebody did the uh, they were driving the Batmobile and they hit the lever in the middle there and the you know the the famous bat U turn where the parachutes come out. And that's what they did to everybody, not only just here, New York and wherever else and you can't go here. You're going to be quarantined for 14 days. So let's get baseball going. Let's go. The Mets and Yankees are playing uh, two, and if we play you guys, I think, on Monday, an exhibition game. Yeah, uh, 20 p.m. Monday. Against, uh, I guess it's in the back in the big ball orchard in the Bronx, known as Yankee Stadium. I also love those old names. Anybody getting a new stadium this year? Nobody got a new stadium this year. Uh, oh, yeah, Texas, Texas did. Texas. Did they ever get into it yet? We're going to next week. <laughs> what, a, what, a way, what a way to open up a new ballpark with nobody in there. They already got the schedules out for next year. Yep, they got that done already. Unbelievable. This year didn't it? Excuse me. This year didn't end yet, and they already got the 2021 schedule. Schedules out. So, f for everybody who lives right here in Mercer County, if you're a Philly sports fan, if you love to, or if you're not, like to go down there and watch the games at the stadiums, they are going fanless until February 21. So, the mayor of Philadelphia, Mr. Kenny, said no people are going to be seeing the Eagles or the Phillies this coming um, season. That could also go into effect. For the Sixers and the Flyers when they start up again in November or December. So they have, we're in July, we have six months where no fans could be in Philadelphia f to watch and the some, games. Some, some people are pushing fans. I think the Dolphins are one of them. They may, but with everything's going up down there, I know. You could get you could get away with it here in Jersey. Yeah, Philadelphia. You're I mean, you could put. However, even even the Yankee Stadium. I mean, what about uh, what about Dome? Why didn't they just put people in? Why didn't they just do the games in Dome Stadium? I mean, indoors, you're not. Don't know. Nothing's gonna well, happen. That's what yet. it is for. Uh, all I mean, Texas is a Dome Stadium. Yeah. Well, so the Rangers, Astros have Dome Stadiums as well. Oh, what, what's this now? Toronto might do their games in Buffalo. That's what, that's what I told you. Well, that was reading that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so from now until February. Yeah, but they were just they were just playing simulator. They were just doing games over and uh So I got a I got a headache from all of this. So that's what's going on with the uh, city of Philadelphia, no spectators until the end of February. Unbelievable. It, it's just like I said, it's it's money now. Right. With all these networks. Because now it, it's gotten to be money because they, they need to air some like somebody uh, one of my friends noted on Facebook, what are we gonna what are we gonna watch in the fall? They're not they're not producing any shows, but some shows like Marvel does with their movies, they'll film simultaneously. Like Infinity Wars ended they were filming Endgame at the same time. So a lot of these shows when they stopped were filming for the following season and some do and right. some don't. Right. But as we all know, somebody's coming back to Law and Order and then doing a spin off of his own show. Right. So 
What they're saying is they're going to try uh, college football in September. If it doesn't work, because well, well, they're doing hockey. Yeah, they're well, going to try we got hockey next week. The playoffs? No, no, that's uh, two weeks for hockey. Two weeks. That's, two, it's yeah. going to start the same time as uh, basketball. So what they're going to do is in September they're going to try to do college football, but if they can't because the numbers ain't seen right, they're mm-hmm. going to wait until the spring and do fo- college football in the spring. That's not bad. Ho- hopefully, you know, pe- people want sports. We Not only do we need sports, we need music. And now there's a whole there's a whole big thing going on with with uh, tickets from StubHub or whoever right. these companies are aren't giving money back to their fans. Right, because uh, I feel because I feel uh, always buy listen, listen up. Never buy tickets off these secondhand used because let me tell you, when I worked security at MetLife Stadium, I'll never forget this night. This poor girl, uh, Taylor Swift was playing in concert. Oh joy, and uh, you know I I don't get involved with the tickets, that's all box office. So I heard the little girl crying, and the mother was there, and I said, what's wrong? Can I possibly help you? And she bought the tickets off a second hand. I forgot who it was. They were no good. So I I had said to her, I said, did you use your credit card? You better cancel the sale. She did, and then made out that uh, they helped her out. They wound up seeing the show. I was happy that she... The little girl, after crying, was able to go see Taylor Swift in concert. And, you know, I, I don't like that. You know, you, you pay all that money. And I believe she said she paid like $295 for two tickets. Right, right. You now, know. you don't want to hear that. Because I w- back to uh, what I want to say before we have our guest caller call in. I feel for the people, when they shut everything down in March, everybody who works at concession stands, yeah, they've, these, been, they've uh, been uh, shut these since people, yeah. March. Now they thought they'll come back next season. They're going to be out for additional two more months, start of next season too. For what, what, what's that? For what? T- what sport? For uh, for basically, it doesn't affect uh, it affects the Eagles because no fans, so they can't buy nothing for at the concession stands for the Eagles. Wells Fargo Center has been closed since March, so Flyers. And Sixers, when they come back in November or December, mm. they've already been out of work since March. They can't come back again until after in February. So that's two more months where that second job that they have. Well, that, that's like me too with you PNC know? Art Center. Uh, there's no concerts, and they keep saying that Rod Stewart hasn't called a show off in September yet. So, so I, I have I'm no to, idea uh, what's going now, on. What they did was they paid him this season. Are they going to do the same thing next season? When it's dollar no, we'll, uh, we'll be back to normal hopefully by then. But base, uh, the only thing normal will be baseball because it's going to end in time. Hockey usually starts, what, in November? Yeah, they're going to push that. They're going to start. Uh, they start in October, but they're going to go in November now. You know, we got started. a phone call. Hello, caller. Hello, Sal. Yes. This is Jake. Hey, what's going on, Jake? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jake Robinson from the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you today, brother? All right. So where are you calling from tonight? I'm calling from Pauley's Island, South Carolina. So, uh, it's a nice little beach town. It's about 20 miles south of uh, Myrtle Beach. But it's uh, it's much different than Myrtle Beach. It's more like a communal kind of private little neighborhood. And uh, it's real nice down here tonight. Got some uh, got some good sunshine in today. The um, high tides are now breaking out. So yeah, not bad, man. Paulie's out of South Carolina, God's country, baby. Yeah. So when we were talking, you were headed up to uh, Baltimore. So how did it, how did it go? Oh, actually, uh, no. I've I've been doing like interviews with people in Baltimore, but uh, I actually haven't been home to Baltimore, and I guess it's been five years now. Uh, and now with the COVID nineteen going on, you know, I don't, I don't, honestly, brother, I don't do much, man. I, I, you know, I, I barely even left the house. I, I walk the dog, and most of the day I just spend time on uh, 
you know, developing new baseball content and new things for the room. But that's pretty much my life. It's it's pretty boring, man. I don't I don't travel anywhere these days. I went up to um, uh, I think you're ta- thinking about the uh, Cal Ripken um, the uh, Cal Ripken tournament they have down here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, Cal Ripken has a, a set of fields down here, a little complex, and they had a little league uh kind of tournament yesterday. My my one of my high school friends, his son played in it, so I went up there and watched him play baseball yesterday. So that's probably what you're thinking. Oh, cool! Yeah, he does a lot of great uh, stuff for the uh, for youth. Uh, uh, Cal Ripken, another another great in the, in the game of baseball. So, uh, oh yeah. So, how long has your your network been going? And uh, tell us all about it. Well, it's the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network. Uh, it originally started. It was like uh, it was literally like nine of us in this room. It was uh. It was like two Cubs fans, a White Sox fan, a couple Pirates fans, uh, me, the Orioles fan, and actually uh, one of the uh, one of the couples they got divorced. So uh, you know, one of them left. The, they both kind of left the room actually. So uh, in the beginning it was just a mere seven of us, and uh, I had this kind of idea where I wanted to be a little different than other rooms that are out on Facebook, uh, something a little more um, interactive, comprehensive banter. Uh, so we started building it up little by little, and uh, it's kind of uh, evolved through the years. This is now year five. It's uh, real strong. I got a got a real good, strong fan base in there. They they're very supportive. Um, we you know I was doing podcasts for a while, and uh, you know with COVID and everything that kind of fizzled out. So I was kind of like listening to you earlier about you know developing content for you know restless rooms. So. Basically, the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network room, it was really restless this year. Uh, there was a lot of asters trolling, and it was really just falling apart, the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I got out, you know, and I just, you know, baseball fans, they just need content. That's all it is. You know, if they, they're, they're like anybody else. If they don't get their content, they start getting surly with one another. So uh, I started developing this year uh, different styles of podcasts. I started going more video. And, um, I have like um, these trivia game shows that we've come up with. We have a person in our room called uh, Leo G. He's out of Melbourne, Australia. Uh, and he's just one of many a trivia experts that I have in the room. But we had a thing where you win Leo's money. We would have somebody come into the room and uh, do trivia games with him every week. And, uh, you know, only one guy was able to beat him, and that was Mark guy out of the UK. Uh, <laughs> he went on quite a run. We'll probably bring that back at some point. That's then we do cool. shows like Launch Angle, and I've recently been doing shows like uh, Backwards K, where we collect ball players and their stories. And uh, last couple of weeks, I've interviewed uh, Spaceman Bill Lee, Benny Agbanyani, Ken Singleton, um, Willie Mays, Aikens, Ron Robs. I mean, it's been a very eclectic group of ball players. Oh wow! Cool. And uh, I've basically been giving you know content to a bunch of fans, much like yourself that are in need and suffering for baseball content. So, you know, much like you, man, I've been plugging away at it. I uh, got a good solid fan base here and uh, I'm very blessed that uh, they're very supportive of everything that I do. I saw that. And I, I saw coming through, you know, Facebook and I saw that. I said, Oh, this looks like an interesting uh, group. And I said, let me check it out and join in. And I was seeing all that. And I said, wow, this, this is great. You know, like you said, anything to get the content out there for the fans because it, it's it was crazy. I mean, we we uh, started the show last January, so I said, do we go through the whole year? We might as well because baseball doesn't end if you think about it. Because right after the playoffs in December, you got your, you know, your uh, what do you call winter meetings? You, you, you winter meetings. So let's do right, the, yeah. let's do winter meeting special. Who's going to sign who? Where is Garrett Cole going to go? Where is this guy? You know, and it was very, very interesting to, to get all that happening. So I said, oh, yeah. you know, it's pretty good. And then we started getting uh, the Miracle League of Mercer County on, and they were bringing up the kids to the studio. And then we, uh, of course, had Sean Casey calling in January. It was the first show of the mm-hmm. year to uh, see what he does out there. And we went out in February to meet him, and we had a great time. What a, what a great man and Great thing that he does for uh, South Hills PA, along with the Miracle League, for all these kids. And you right. guys uh, should check it out. And I think there's a Miracle League not too far in your area, if you ever heard about mm. it. 
It's uh, MiracleLeague.org, I think it is, or doc, one of them. And the whole story is, and they were on HBO with a big special about it and how they uh, developed this. And for the kids, it's a you know baseball field made out of clay, you know, to get their wheelchairs and whatever thing they have using it to, to run around or whatever. And it's it's a great thing we got involved with here. Yeah, I mean, and like like you said, man, it's just that's been 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 the challenging part is uh, been you know de- you know developing content for them. But I, I have to be honest with you, man, it's it's actually been quite refreshing for me. Um, I work I work at a Jack Nicholas Golf Club. I'm currently on furlough right now. Mm. Um, I'm I'm like in my private life, I'm like a head chef, and uh, you know we're not allowed to have banquets and weddings or any of that right now. So I'm basically on furlough. And what I've done during that time is I've taken, you know, all that energy that I would be using to work that job, I've pretty much, you know, invested you in the show. Yep. And, um, I'm pretty much, you know, I feel like I'm getting paid to do this. So, you know, every day I wake up and I'm, I'm banging out phone numbers and, you know, I'm looking up, you know, stats and everything that there is. And it's kind of hard right now, like you said, with no content. But in a way, it's been refreshing for me because I've been able to, like, become very creative and think outside the box and, uh, you know, and really put it to the, the members in the Let's Talk Baseball podcast network. Like, what do you want? What what do you like? And they'll let you know. If they like it, they'll let you know. And if they yeah. don't like it, they'll let you know that too. Exactly. So yeah, we were doing that fair, here. Equitable trade. Yep. We were doing that here. What we did was uh, we did a list, you know, the, the top uh, – all positions, uh, the best plays for the decade from uh, from uh, 2000 to 2000, uh, whatever, 10 to 20, and uh, we did uh, the 70s, and you know, we 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 found something. You know, we were just right. doing the yeah. the announces and how AB, uh, how Monday Night Baseball came in and all that other stuff. So there's there's so much old stuff to to look forward to, and like you know, we spoke about uh, what else did we do? Uh, Hall of Famers and yeah. who should be in the right. Hall and yeah. all that other stuff and yeah, yeah, your typical water cooler baseball banter. Yeah, definitely. Right. You know, I mean, it, it. You know, it just takes a little bit of you know creative process and you know and and you know it's just especially in my room and I mean it was getting surly. I mean it was a lot of Astros trolling and and you know and like it was just out of control. So. Uh, things seem to simmer down, and uh, I'm looking forward to the season, man. I'm thinking 60 days and 67, uh, 60 games and 67 days. I, I'm thinking that's going to be pretty exciting. Um, I think it's going to come down to bullpens. Uh, I think your Yankees have a definitely have a strong bully. I was talking to Kevin Singleton about that the other night, um, and I also think that you have like really good organizational depth, which I think is going to come in handy uh, should anything go wrong. I mean, look at Arnaldo Statman right now. He's being quarantined, so I think you guys have depth in the bully. You have depth in the organization. Uh, you know, as far as organization, yeah, you got the uh, Chad, Chad Green so came a long way. Yeah, are going to be stacked. It's going to be really tough to beat the American League this year. Yeah, so uh, Ken Ken Ken's a great guy. He's been he's been with the Yankees a long time. He was a great ball player as well, uh, playing with the uh, Mets and then the uh, Orioles. Uh, now in the Yankee broadcast booth and. Uh, let me t- <laughs> I, I got I to tell you, man, uh, Ken Singleton is actually, like, my hero from, like, when I was a kid. I mean, I, you know, I'm just a kid who grew up in West Baltimore, mm-hmm. loving the Orioles. And, uh, you know, Ken Singleton was my everything. I obsessively watched that man and everything that he did. And I couldn't tell you, man, he is class personified. Right. Uh, I don't even like calling him Ken Singleton. I call him Mr. Singleton when I speak to him. Yeah. Uh, he is – class he's got a million stories and i mean you know as a baltimore kid it's great man because those were those were our glory days right there and you know he was there front seat for all of it and uh yeah i mean he is great and you guys are very lucky to have him because i gotta tell you i've seen that guy grow in the booth and he is now firmly established himself as one of the best color analyst guys in the game right now and he's right. he's versatile enough where he can do play by play, which, you know, you guys are very, very lucky to have that man in the booth for sure. All right. Let me, let me ask you this question. Cause we were talking about it, you know, how we have, you know, you have Michael K who's not, who hasn't played the game, but he's been in the radio now in the TV booth. Do you, 
it, do you think it helps a lot what major league ball players would a what would a re, like a regular person who hasn't been on the field? Um, you know, I don't I don't think that that really matters in today's game. You got general managers who went to Harvard for law now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think the game has totally changed. I mean, and from when we, I also, yeah, like you I, said, I also, when you watched it, the, the Orioles had such a great, great team in, in those days, you know, with Weaver and all those guys and, you know, giving Yankees a run for their money. We won't talk about uh, Jeffrey Mayer, but, uh, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you, the old stadiums were the best. You know, we would, we, that was one of our shows. We were talking about the old stadiums, the cookie cutter stadiums and, you know, I, I always I always felt, you know, like some of the guys who were on the field helped the guys in the booth a lot. You know, I guess see things different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely I, – I would agree with you. I mean, you're even seeing it now with, uh, like, women fashion softball players. In the, what's yep. her name? Jessica Mendoza. You, you know what I mean? Like, I think the game is totally changing. Uh, the one guy on MLB Network, I can't remember his name on top of my head. He is fantastic at play-by-play. He's never played a game in his life. So I don't think that those things – I think that, uh, you know, baseball is having a, a, a trouble by uh, expanding their, their fan base right now. That's, what, that's a play, major problem uh, for them. And, for MLB Network. You, you, you talking about, that? You're talking about Bob Costas maybe? No, not Bob Costas. I mean, he's he's worldly right now. I, I can't remember his name at the time. He he does like little talk shows for them on there. But every once in a while, I, can't, I think it's John or something. I cannot remember for the life of me off the top of my head. Uh, I could look it up here, but yeah, he was uh he calls a great game. I mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of guys who have never played the. I don't think. Oh, Jack was Buck it uh, Vascursion? Right? Oh, Matt Vascursion. Matt. You talking about him, maybe? Vascursion, yeah. Vascursion. yeah oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's oh, now, he's good. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's yeah. on uh, yeah, he's ESPN uh, Sunday right? Night played, uh, Crew now. Never played a major league inning in his life. The guy is fantastic. You know. Actually, so speaking about think, speaking you know, about that, a lot of things have changed. They actually switched the booths for uh, this coming uh, season. Sunday, it's only Vascursion and A Rod and Mendoza's. Now teaming up well, with nothing uh, up. if A Rod if A Rod gets to bite the Mets he ain't going anywhere. And A Rod A Rod's teamed up with Vascursion and they pulled Mendoza out of that booth and paired her with Boom Sh- Boom Shambi. Uh John Shambi. Well Shambi's okay. good too because usually it was always um Boog Shambi and it was Boog Sh- yes. Boom Shambi and Rick Sutcliffe. But now, right. I right. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, it was always Sut and uh, Shambi. But now with Mendoza being with uh, Boom Shambi, I don't know if it's going to be a three-man booth with uh, her and Sutcliffe. Probably which is not be now, those two. No. Uh, J- Jake, let me ask you a question. Did Kenny say how they're going to be calling these games? Uh, he did, actually. He said that uh, the booths will be custom-made in Yankee Stadium. They will be calling home games. Now, when the Yankees are on the road, they will be uh, calling play-by-play out of the studios in Connecticut. They will not be on the road. They will not be allowed to do any interviews in the clubhouse. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions going on there. But yeah, th- those are like those are like the big ones that he told me about. Uh, so basically, every every home team will be the same. That's this, I guess, broadcast from wherever when the team goes on the road. Right. And, w- and what right. I, know- I mean, because yeah, most of these teams have their own network anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. Right. And now what I'm not getting is if if the the thing is so high in in Texas and Florida, why would these teams even travel there? Is what I'm You know, I don't know, man. I'm just holding my breath that it all works out. Yeah, we I all mean, are, I, believe I me. I still have reservations. <laughs> I still have reservations about whether this is going to play all the way out, quite honestly, but I'm not going to be mad because if it doesn't because I think that baseball has done an effort, a great effort, in trying to make this happen. Right, exactly. So what I think they might do is when, say, the uh, Phillies go to Atlanta and uh, my Florida for the Marlins and uh, the Braves. So what, do they got to be quarantined for two weeks? No, they'll basically be in their own hotel or whatever for those couple three days, and after the game, they go. that's all they're going to be. 
to the hotel, to the hotel. Yeah. And back into the yeah, they're all having their private planes and everything, so yeah, they're so not really. Yeah, so they'll go really to the hotel, right to the, sta- right to the yeah. hotel, right to the stadium, and stadium right back to the hotel for the th- uh, two days, and then the third day they go back and they fly back to where they're going. So, to. so like the Yankees, they don't really need a plane. They're going to take a bus to City Field in Philadelphia yeah. anyway. So yeah. it's yeah. all Baltimore yeah. because it's closed, so right. you don't really right. need to get on a plane. Yeah. So the only time they'll be flying. Um, the Phillies will, or basically, the Phillies will be flying when they go to Florida and Atlanta for the Braves and Marlins. Right, yeah, Everything yeah. else will be uh, no. They'll have to fly up to. Um, no, we don't even know where the Toronto. Toronto right, so yet. Toronto. Same well, if it's in Buffalo, I don't know. Buff- if they play in Buffalo, Toronto. If Toronto's playing Buffalo, you're still gonna have to fly because I don't think oh, we're gonna do a bus ride. Maybe the Yankees could do from uh, the Bronx to Buffalo. And same thing with the Mets, but the Phillies, uh-huh. I think they would have to fly to Buffalo. Hey, Jake, what what minor league uh, team comes out of where you are? Uh, we're down here by the uh, Myrtle Beach Pelicans, which is like a lower A Cubs team. All right, yeah, yeah. We had a, a yeah. We've had who was the guy that called in? Uh, Ray, Ray Torres. His son was signed by the Nationals. He called in a few weeks ago, and he's uh, from North. Who was that? Ray Torres. He's from North Carolina. He's oh. from North Carolina. His son his son was signed by the uh, Nats. He's a catcher. Right on, right on. Yeah, we were asking him about, you know, what's down there and everything, and I forgot what – what did he say, the White Sox, I think? Yeah, I think so, White Sox. No, no, no. Uh, he I said, think the, uh, White Sox are, the White Sox are in uh, Durham, I think. Yeah, he was saying the uh, Durham Bulls, like Durham Bulls. It's yeah, like the White Sox. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we, yeah uh, the Pelicans do pretty well down here. There's also the, the Charleston River Dogs. I'm not sure who the – I think they might be the White Sox too, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I'm not quite sure though. I've never been down to uh, I don't, like I said, man. I, I don't stray far, man. I, I got like a five mile radius. I live near the beach. I don't really have to go anywhere, you know. So I try not to. Nice, 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 man. It, it's it's probably beautiful down there. Before we uh, oh so uh, man, it's, it's, before it's we definitely can, God's country, bro. Before we it's continue, God's country. Before we continue, I want to give a shout out to our uh, Mercer County teams. They're having their uh, Summer tournament for since they haven't been in play uh, in the spring, they're having their uh, summer ending tournament right now, and the winner of each bracket will move and play a Woodfront Park for a championship. Oh wow! So we got baseball going on. I love it. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get the high. <laughs> you gotta get it started, man. You gotta do something. Well, you like like Jake said, you know, if if baseball is trying their best efforts. Uh, like we were talking about last week, does it get worse before it gets better? Hopefully not. You know, so far, it's 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 smooth sailing so far. Not that many guys are coming well, up. With I don't it. know about smooth sailing, man. Every day I look at Twitter, man, and I'm finding this guy's got COVID, that guy's got COVID. I don't know if it's smooth sailing, but we'll see what happens. I, you know, I'm I'm very I'm very apprehensive. Uh, I've been thinking that this, the season was gonna was gonna jump off at some point, but it's just not getting better, man. The curve is not being flattened in a lot of places, and I can't blame guys who don't want to play. Oh no, neither could I. No, no, no. Can't blame those guys at all because they they got young kids at home. They got you know there's there's yeah, so much whatever. to do. Yeah. Like like my boy Richie out of the Bronx always says, man. Everybody's got their own boat to row. And that's what it comes down to. What right. what my boat is might be different than what your boat is. Everybody's got to do what they got to do to captain their ship. That's that's that is right. You know, everybody. You know, it's kind of strange, man. It, it's really. It, whoever thought, you know, you know, when we we came back from Pittsburgh, it was like towards the end of February. And whoever thought, like three weeks later, this would happen. You know, pretty pretty right. pretty crazy. What what's going on you know we want everybody to stay safe of course and and be healthy and and breathe the fresh air when it's over and go oh finally you know you know like we said once this is over you know it's going to be hard to get into anything you know the streets would be crazy and the traveling and who's going here and there so you know what's kind of odd that even these baseball players are getting it i don't know how they're getting it but they're getting it that's odd. It's kind of odd that they're getting it too. Yeah, I mean it. You know, it it, it knows no bounds, right? I mean, it doesn't tear at all. It's you know, 
It's mm-hmm. an assassin. And it's, you know, if you're not protecting yourself and you're not protecting others, you're really doing a disservice. Yeah. No, not at all. And, you know, hopefully, you know, the, you know, we're back to normal next year and we could uh, finally see what the Texas's new stadium looks like with all that going on. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. I, I, I was just talking to someone last night, man. I, I think it's funny that the Texas Rangers need a stadium, you know, that was just built in the 90s. I mean, I look at Camden Yards, that was built in the 90s, and I guarantee you, uh, if there's Major League Baseball in 100 years from now, Camden Yards will still be the stadium of the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, that stadium ain't going nowhere, you know what I mean? But you look at some of these stadiums that were built in the 90s, you know, same thing in football with the Washington football team. They they want a new stadium. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is insane. The yeah. Braves got a new stadium. They just built that stadium for the Olympics in 96. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, they got, I, I think see, that's I what, see. their third or fourth stadium I already? a big waste of tax dollars right there, honestly. Get it right the first time, you know, and then you won't have to do this every 25, 30 years. Unbelievable. Now it's all, it's all corporate. I mean, you it's look at some stadiums, and they're built to last forever. Look at PNC. Look at the Giants Stadium. Look at Camden Yards. Those stadiums will last forever. You know right. what I mean? Like, they're not – It's it's and then you – it's just a monumental waste of tax dollars. It's so frustrating. It's crazy. I, I miss the old Yankee Stadium. I don't like the new one as much. It's not as, you know, with the old one before this one was built, and you walked into it, you knew that was Yankee Stadium. You knew that was the house that yeah, was built. Yeah, I, I agree you, with you, man. You um, felt that every presence. Time I walk in, yep. yeah, yeah, you know, every time I walk into Yankee Stadium, it's the only, the old Yankee Stadium, it's the only st- stadium where you certainly feel a presence when you walk into it. Right. So, uh, I walked into Fenway. I walked into Wrigley. You, you kind of feel that a little bit, but it's not like Yankee Stadium. In Yankee Stadium, you actually feel like ghosts of, like, Babe Ruth and Gehrig and, you know, DiMaggio and these guys running around. I mean, it really takes you back when you were in that stadium. I used to love – I didn't really like the uh, the uh, <laughs> the physical nature of fans towards me wearing an Oriole hat. But, uh, you know, it was it was a great place to watch baseball for sure. Oh, it's worse when you're a Met fan wearing a, a hat out there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so speaking about, <laughs> speaking about stadiums. Well, I, I, we actually have a, uh, I have a friend in here in our room, the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network, uh, Jorge Huertas. Now, check this out. He is a Mets fan that grew up in the Bronx. So, you know, go figure that out. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's crazy because yeah, don't forget. Been horrendous. We, we, we lost the Giants and Dodgers to California. And then, right. then the Mets came into play after that. So then New York, who had three, four teams, wound up with just two now. Go ahead, Carl. Take it away. Yeah. yeah. So back to how you guys were talking about stadiums, the only oldest three stadiums left are Fenway, Wrigley, and Dodger Stadium. Those are the only three that are remaining. Yeah, that's the only three that probably will. I don't think the Do- – you're not going to touch Dodger Stadium. No, never. no. They're no. just going to no. renovate. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, an, an underrated stadium is uh, Kansas City. Kaufman Stadium. Yeah, Kaufman, yeah. They, very uh, underrated yeah, stadium. Yeah. And I've never been to Anaheim, but I've heard very good things about Anaheim. Yeah, they didn't really get – I tell you, I, yeah. I really like Petco. I like San Diego's, uh, San Diego's Stadium. I'd really like to go watch a baseball game there. Yeah, I like that left field thing with that uh, building. Yeah, with the warehouse. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice little touch. Like, like we were talking about now, if this COVID thing didn't hit, we were actually going to take a trip over to Baltimore to see a Yankee game because the ticket prices are great. And I always wanted to try Boo Powell's uh, rib joint in right field. I keep hearing great things uh-huh. about it. And I'm like, damn. Sure. <laughs> And hopefully next year. Yeah, but uh, has got some good, uh, good pit beef out there. He definitely does. Got some good stuff going on out there. Uh, and he's usually sitting out there. He loves talking to to the fans. Now, what 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 was the old stadium called? Was it just Oriole Park, right? No, yeah, Memorial. 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 Memorial Stadium. So that's where the Colts shared the, yes. the Colts yep. shared the stadium yep. with. The, yes. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Memorial Stadium. It was the uh, largest outdoor insane asylum. <laughs> Correct. And then what it happened was, was what happened it was so crazy. Back to that history. So when the Colts That's right. So back when the Colts moved out of Baltimore in uh, 83 84, Ursay uh, did a little uh move 
when they went to uh, Indianapolis. The Ravens, when they left uh, Cleveland, they played uh, a couple of seasons at Memorial Stadium for the, uh, when Baltimore yes. went, and then when they closed. Yes. And then, yeah. yeah and and then, also, uh, before the Ravens, uh, we had a Canadian football team, the the, the uh, Stallions, and they played for two years. We actually won a great cup. We're the only. Uh, oh, North, I didn't know that. We're the only American oh. team to win a great cup uh, in the CFL. I did not know that. I did not know that. Oh, the CFL. Yeah, yeah. Then we uh, had what was the what was the other thing? We had the Jersey Generals. Yeah, that was the uh, USFL. You know, the USFL. That was USFL, and we had the Baltimore Stars and USFL, and they won a championship. So we won a championship in the USFL and the CFL. Uh, we won a couple in the NFL, and you know, <laughs> I guess that's what what, what what Baltimore does: football and crab cakes. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, don't, let me tell you, like we were talking about, Baltimore had some great teams, man. I mean, what did you, what did you think about Machado leaving? Well, honestly, I thought that the, the Orioles were a year too late in pulling that trigger. Quite honestly, and it just goes to the ineptitude of uh, Dan Duquette, who was probably the worst general manager that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, that guy was an absolute joke. He's an, and, he's uh, an, he's an anal- the, analysis the truth is now, that right? Machado was traded a year too late. Uh, yeah, if he would have yeah, traded yeah, him so. a year sooner, so. you would have got a a much better return for him. The return that we got for him has been awful. And, you know, I mean, I, I love Manny Machado. I think he's a great player. He was never going to be here because we were never going to pony up that kind of money for, for him or for any player. I don't see us, you know, paying $25, $26 million a year. for. I mean, it's just silly. Yeah, so, uh, somebody... We're not in the situation where we can match dollar for dollar with the Red Sox or Yankees. We got to do it a totally different way. We got to build through the farm. And, you know, so good riddance to Manny. Have fun out in San Diego. Uh, you know, hopefully Mackenzie Gore comes up and you guys catch a little fire this year. But, you know, they're a terrible team. So, you know, you, you, ran, you, you ran out west for the money. You got your money. Good luck. Um, now, the Orioles, I think, on the other hand, I think finally they're under uh, some good direction here. Uh, Mike Elias, Sig Meidel, uh, these guys are no idiots. They are they are actually baseball savant geniuses, and they know exactly what they're doing. Their their strength is in uh, developing players and right. seeing talent and scouting that talent and bringing them in. And they have in the, in the past year and a half, I've seen an absolute 180 turn from this organization. Now. The Orioles are probably still about four years away from any kind of uh, competitive baseball. But yeah, that was, that uh, they was are like, certainly yeah. on the right course to building something right. that should last much longer than three years. That was like Toronto. I was always afraid of the Blue Jays, you know, even after they won, you know, until now. And I'm like, they always bring up these, these players. Now you got all the kids, you know, whose dads played. These kids right. are going to develop into some ball players, and yes, they are. I forgot how many years back I used to say Baltimore's going to. I mean, uh, Toronto. I was afraid it was going to be the sleeper team in the East because they had such great talent. They would start out like a house of fire, and then they would just like die out. Well, again, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier with the organizational depth. Yeah. You better be watching out for Tampa Bay too. Oh yeah, Tampa Bay Tampa is Bay's loaded scary, with yeah. young talent. Mm-hmm. And these, these, the the Orioles, the Blue Jays, and the Tampa Bay's of the world, they got smart, man. They finally figured it out. We cannot match the Red Sox and Yankees dollar for dollar. We have to match them for talent. And yeah, yeah. they're not spending crazy money. All three of those teams are building through their farm systems. And uh, I, I think, I think the Tampa Bay Rays are a really dangerous team. I think they're probably, you know, I say the Rays and I say the A's are very dangerous to what the Yankees are trying to accomplish here this year. Yeah. And don't forget, it took the Yankees long. I mean, uh, 90, 92, 93, they started, you know, and Gene, Gene Stick Michael and Bob Watson started developing these kids in the farm system, you know, the core four or whatever you wanted to call them. And they were just surrounded by a few veterans here and there. And then look at that. And then uh, he uh, – Brian Cashman took over. Yeah, and, and that here's was the it. thing, man. You're not going to be able to go on these long losing streaks this year. You're not going to be able, you know, you're not going to be able to weather the storm with a seven game losing streak. That's going to that's going to knock you out of the game. Right. Uh, if yep. you lose eight out of twelve, you're done. 
So, yeah, without a doubt, you know, yeah. you have to minimize those losses as much as possible. And I think that's going to it's going to give the uh, baseball season this NFL feel this year, where every single game matters. I even think that that managers will be managing games much differently this year. Uh, they're going to be mad. They're going to be going straight for the jugglers. They're going to be going for wins. Right, and not only that, they're going to be uh, a lot of hitting, a lot of small ball. You remember a lot of Billy ball, a lot of you know, like Earl Weaver and them used to do back in the day, and. Oh, Earl Weaver was absolutely not about the small ball. But yeah, I know what you're saying, though. Earl Weaver was about get two guys on base and Kenny Singleton and Eddie Murray hit the ball out of the ballpark and let's go home. But, uh, yeah, uh, you could see a revitalizing of the small the, the Orioles actually have employed some small ball and speed, and I've never seen the Orioles run on the bases and butt. I mean, it's incredible. So, yeah, man, you could be seeing – all kinds of things pulled out of the hat this year as far as the strategy is concerned. You might see, um, you know, double steals at home plate and all kinds of things. I mean, quite honestly, I expect managers to be very, very aggressive. All right, Jake, I'm going to put you on a hot seat, brother. Since you're a uh, right. Baltimore Orioles fan, Uh-oh. <laughs> give me the outlook of what you think will happen with the record-wise for the Orioles this year. Uh, what's my outlook for them? Yeah. Uh, quite honestly, uh, I, I kind of hope they lose every game. Um, I thought <laughs> streak last year was 26 and 34, which is god awful. I mean, I don't see us being much better than that. Um, I would like to get this number one pick here. Uh, uh, Garden Hire, since he's been in uh, Detroit, has you know returned their their, their blessings with uh, four number one picks and. It's, it's helped the Tigers out quite well. Look at the Tigers, man. They're stout in young talent. Yeah, this, uh, this new like kid. The Orioles. Yeah, this new kid. I was watching what? him take batting practice. The, the, the number one. This yeah. kid was hitting the ball out of the stadium. Woo. Uh, the kid has ridiculous power, man. It's it's unbelievable. And that's not all they got. They got the Casey Mize, the Mannings. I mean, those uh, those that that Detroit Tigers franchise is coming for sure, and the White Sox are coming for sure in that division. Yeah, we picked, uh, I picked teams, the White Sox as a sleeper team. I, I picked them. Oh, yeah, for sure. Losing Michael Kopech is a big kind of loss for them. But I still think that they're going to be pretty good. But uh, going back to the Orioles, um, I, I'd like to kind of see them, you know, just try to develop players at this point. Um, you know, and I'm not really expecting much. I expect us to be last place in the American League East. And uh, hopefully we get that number one pick next year. Yeah, I'm uh... – I've been saying it uh, since uh, we started uh, back in the winter meetings with the signings. I'm a he's a uh, Philly fan. I'm a Philly, I'm a Philly <laughs> uh, Philadelphia Philly fan. So everybody right. was saying with uh, Girardi coming on in October when he signed him as a new manager, I still don't like what they did uh, in uh, free agent signing. All they did was Zach Wheeler. They didn't do nothing else. That yeah. they got Didi uh, to for sure stop, but. I'm thinking maybe 500 at best. Everybody's saying, "Oh, they they're going to compete. They're going with Joe Girardi there." It's still the same rotation that they had last year. And exactly you, right because you have exactly you have Nola as you want. Dude, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I I think that the uh, the Phillies they have one of the better lineups in the National League. But oh man, that pitching is just oh yeah, it's horrendous. I mean, it's, it's horrendous up. because they're saying that. You still have Nola as your one. You have Wheeler as your two. Ar- Arietta is only is your three man, but you don't know with his arm if he's he's in his later left of his. Uh, but this is a contract year. Maybe he's going to surprise. But after that, you have and maybe nobody in a else. short season. Maybe in a short season. Right. To be and optimistic, you catch fire with right. Arietta. You, you know have, what I mean? You like, have your, uh, he just comes out the gate hot, and that could happen too. Right. You have your brace. You have Bryce Harper. Everyone's all uh, worrying about they're not going to sign uh, JT Rio Muto at the end of the year because uh, when they were in spring training. Tra- hopefully they keep them. They better they because trade, it, trade them. In uh, spring training, when they were in Florida, they were in, in uh, talks. But COVID started. And then Clintac went on the air a couple, uh, I think last week, saying now with uh, COVID, it's another. Uh, but he'll make the most money. With the Phillies in the off season, he could get the max deal with the Phillies. But why wait until the off season? You should have upped them um, right away. But he's just focusing on playing ball. So if they lose Rio Muto, that's gonna—he's the best catcher. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, I think it's imperative that they sign JT, and I and I believe that they will. Quite honestly, uh, I think you got two really good things going for you. You got Matt Klintek, and you got fucking. Uh, sorry about that. You got Andy McPhail. No, you need and, to get uh, rid of two both of them. Baseball minds right there. I don't want. He has a win. He has. He has. McPhail has a one since he was with the Minnesota Twins in '91. They need to get rid of both of them. You know what I'm saying? They need to get rid of. Ooh. They need to get rid of. Wow, I don't know if I agree with you on that. I think I think Andy McPhail is a very good baseball mind. I mean, you got to do how you how you going to win with with that pitching staff. You know, the pitching staff has got to get better. Okay, now you traded away Sancho Sanchez. Right. So if you say I think right. So if you you keep McPhail, but then you need to get rid of Clintac. One of them's got to go. Right. Oh, don't worry I about it. You. Girardi Girardi is going to turn that whole team around. I told you in the beginning. I don't say the Mets. The Mets let say slip that guy through their fingers. That was a big. No, mis- it's a mis- good hire, but no, with I'm what saying. they have, I don't see it. They don't have enough. Well, the, well, well Girardi didn't. He didn't come into much. Two thousand nine, the Yankees really didn't win in a long time, and he, he brought them back to the World Series. But they had he had the players though. He, but he got AJ Burnett. He had C. AJ Burnett. C- oh my God, I he hated got, that guy. You got AJ. You had AJ AJ Burnett that year. You got. CC that year. I think you had to share that year. No, they 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 had they no. They just signed uh, Sabathia and AJ. Yeah, no. They also did share it. Share wasn't there in no way. On the mark to share. You know. Love John Sterling. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the only person. Yeah, D's gonna help. And but the only pitching wise they had was um. Was our... don't forget he's a he's a he's a former catcher. He's won everywhere he went. He he took he Zach took a Wheeler. few. Yeah, well, now well. Tommy Hunter. Tommy Hunter is on the shelf. He's on the IL. David Robinson, David Robinson, I don't think I'm going to see him. I don't know what's up with him. Yeah, the Yankees took yeah, him back I mean, and he was a bust. There's no doubt that, that especially that bully of the Phillies, is a uh, suspect. But, uh, you know, I don't think it's a total wash in Philly. I don't, I, I don't know that. I don't know, 500. I, I guess that could possibly happen. I mean, that's who that's knows, what I, man? It's that's what I see days. because our farms, we have no farm system. The Nationals have a farm system. The Yankees have a farm system. That's true. I think the, the Phillies Braves don't have, have farm. no farm. The Phillies don't have no farm Boy, system. Well, you got Alec Baum, man. Yeah, but they don't you got know. A couple good. Yeah, but they don't know if he's gonna they're gonna bring him up. Or, no, let, 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 Jay, Jay hit the, the nail on the, you know. He made the squad though, didn't he? Did he make the taxi squad? What uh, to come up? I don't know. I think he did make the taxi squad. No, I would check that out, but I think he did. Like he Alec said, Bahamas depending on who comes out of the gate on fire, if Philly come, let me tell you, what was the Phillies might might come out of the gate, you know, with a good start and surprise everybody. What'd you think of the signing with the Puy going to Atlanta? <clears throat> well, I mean, I know the Orioles were interested. I'm, you know, I didn't see what he was going to do for us, quite honestly. Uh, but I don't, you know. It is. It's a lateral move, I guess. I mean, I guess it's uh, sure up the loss of Marcakis. Uh, I wouldn't say that Puig is a Marcakis, but I guess you could plug him in there, Marcakis the spot, and be fine with it. I think the Braves are very good. I mean, they're, you know, like I said, organizational depth, and they're pretty, they're pretty freaking deep. You know. Yeah, that, I'm telling you, that's a scary Eastern division. You know, you got the Braves, the Mets. It really is. I the Mets. Let me saying, tell you, the Mets sure. are going to surprise like, everybody. Here's the way I look at it, with the exception of the Marlins. I could see all those teams coming in first, and I could see all those teams coming in next to last. You know what I mean? Quite yeah. honestly, that's how that division stacks up. Yeah, the Mets, so, the Mets are pretty good this good year, luck. too. <laughs> <laughs> if, I had to, if I had to, because we have, we used to open up, the season opens up, open up next week. If I had to give a, right now as a favorite to win a division, it will be the Nationals because of their rotation. A lot of, a lot of people are picking okay. the Braves. Still picking Atlanta? Yeah. It depends if Freeman uh, is back next week. If Freeman's still out with COVID, then that cancels everything, too. I don't know. That's why. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's all in the air, man. The the Yankees could get hit and four guys could go on COVID, and there goes your season. You know, like, so as far as predictions of this year, I don't know. I'm not even going to go down that road, quite honestly. You can't predict anything. I'm just going to do it 60 games in 67 days. And I'm not, you know, I don't know that I'm going to consider this a world champion, whoever wins this year anyway, quite honestly. I have Uh, have a question for you. Go ahead. I have a question for you uh, for next year. Do you think next year are they going to uh, 
expand the playoffs or keep it as five in each league? I mean, it looks like it's going to be towards expanding the playoffs. That's how they got the players to come back in the first place. So I guess it is what it is. I'm not not a big fan of it at all. Uh, I think there's way too many teams. That's, you know, I I just think that's way too many teams in the playoffs. You're going to be looking at some, you know, 500 teams in the playoffs. Uh, I'm not for expansion because I think the owners have been uh, lowballing these players for the last three off seasons. And if they're not trying to spend money in the off season on guys like, uh, you know, uh, Bryce Harper and, and Manny Machado, when these guys are for free agency, then, you know, why, why should we have another baseball team in another state? I mean, I just think it's ridiculous. So I'm not for expansion. I'm not for expanding the playoffs, but, and I'm not for the universal DH either, but it doesn't, it looks like I'm in the minority. Yeah. I don't like the way it goes for this year, for this year. I, 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 on this, I, I, I like, like it. it for this year. I understand it, but next year I want to go back to the pitchers hit why, in the National League. Yeah, but why not? I always think it would help no. save the pitcher's career having a DH. No, because no, because that's now, that, because here's, that's, here's, here's that's a way that's a way that the pitcher could help their uh, help his uh, team out. He's on a mound. Okay, he could get a hit or he could sacrifice. He helps the team out. You know what I'm saying? You could do your double switches. And uh, if it's DH, you know, it's – I don't like it. I never liked here's, it. I never liked it. Here's my take on it, and I just spoke to Bill Lee about it two weeks ago. Uh, in 1973, when they took his, the bat out of his hand, the American League made cowards of all the pitchers. And that's the bottom line. A pitcher is a baseball player, and a baseball player should swing the bat. Wow, interesting thought. And – and it's the bastardization of this game, and it's created, all, you know, all these little changes along the way create a lot of this dysfunction that we're in today. Mm. They should have just kept baseball the way it was. Right. <clears throat> now, let me uh, – I, I had a, a question, and now I forgot. Oh, what do you, what do you think about uh, getting back to the Astros? I know there's no brawling or arguing anything. So are they going to be uh, – is it going to be hunting season in Houston? Is there going to be what kind of a season? Hunting. <laughs> hunting season in uh, for the Astros. Oh, oh, you mean – okay, with the B-balls. Uh, probably. Probably. Guys will probably get hit, you know, and then just move on. That's baseball. That's the way it goes. Uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think it's been sensationalized by the media and by uh, – basically trolls on face social media. Of course. <laughs> uh, it's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, baseball players and teams have been cheating for so long. And it's, I mean, I can go back to the 1890s when the Orioles were one of the dirtiest ball players, ball teams around. They would literally run from first base to third base across the diamond when the umpire would turn his head. You know, like, I mean, <laughs> cheating has been a That's part of great. this game since you can remember. And That's great. Until we can, you know, find ways to root it out here. I mean, we did it. We it did it when we played. We and we tried to look. The, you know, if you were right-handed batter, you try to look with your right eye. You know, turn around and see what the catcher's throwing down with his fingers. <laughs> you know, and they if they do that yeah. now on the base pads at second base. They're calling the pitch. You know, if a guy's standing on second, he's telling the the hitter what's coming. So what's the big deal? Yeah. Uh, the Dodgers didn't lose that World Series because of the Astros gave it time. The Dodgers lost because they couldn't hit with guys on base, period. Right. They couldn't get it done when it needed to be get done. And the Nationals beat them every game at home last year. So, I mean, what are we talking about? You know, like, I just think the media has blown it up, and it's ridiculous. And quite honestly, I don't have room for it in my room. Uh, I pretty much made that the law. Because uh, yeah, it got that. really bad, man. It got really, really bad. And it yeah. was just yeah. guys were just coming on talking crap, and they weren't even talking baseball anymore. It just became about talking crap. And, uh, you know, you got to watch that sometimes. You don't want that to permeate into your baseball room. Yeah, we, we, we didn't get much of it. We-
I'm really excited to watch the A's play baseball this year. The, the A's are the A's are another team to watch. Yeah, I'm really excited to watch Oakland. I think on the quiet, I think Oakland is very dangerous to the Yankees. Like honestly, I think Oakland and Tampa Bay are your threats, and maybe the Twins because the Twins can you know they can hit the hell out of the ball. Oh yeah, they were they were hitting them out of the park last year. Them right. and the, yeah, they, them and the Yankees are. I think them and the Yankees hit the most home runs in the majors as a one-two force of uh, teams like that. Right. Yeah. So how yeah. you so how you was talking about Houston? Time's running out with them, so they need basically this could be their uh, last hurrah because Verlander's getting up in age, Granky's getting oh, up in Ver- there. Verlander's nowhere retiring. Well, Verlander's going to be thirty. Verlander's I think is thirty eight, and He's, I think Granky is thirty five. So they need to win. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Watch that kid, Jordano Alvarez, this year. I think he can be a monster with 400 at bats. I think this guy could be a straight up force in the American League. So, uh, so I think they, watch him. He's right. Dangerous. I think they have. I think they have two years left in them, and then after they lose those two guys, they need to uh, fill Berlin, up the rotation Berlin, again. Berlin is not going anywhere. Trust me. Yeah, he's it. not going nowhere. No way. No, nah, he loves it there. He'll, and, he'll, uh, he'll be pitching until he's look, about 47 Astros years old. They've done a good job in their farm system, too. They're, they're, they're not suckers. They, they got some players down there. Forrest Whitley, uh, you'll probably see him in the rotation this year. Uh, he had Tommy John injury. He also had uh, some kind of PED or some, some kind of problem or something in, down in the minors. But uh, that kid looks ready to go. He's going to be um, a force, I think. I don't know if he's going to be a force, but I definitely think he's a – Strong middle of the rotation kind of candidate for Houston at this point. The the A's are going to give them a run for their money because they did it last year. The the A's absolutely had, the, the A's the had A's their number this year. Much yeah. better position this year than they were last year. The A's last year were a team where they were trying to figure out who was going to start some of these games. Maybe they'll have a relief pitcher come in and start a couple innings. They don't have to worry about that this year. They got Manaya, they got Lazardo, they got Puck. Uh, you know, they brought in uh, fears. So, I mean, Oakland has a much better starting rotation than they've had in the past couple of years, and I expect them to be a lot better. Yeah, let me year. tell you, 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 Houston almost didn't take that division. They got they got hot at the right time, and that's what happens when mm-hmm. you get hot at the right time. You know, things happen, and that's what they did. Absolutely. The, A, the A's started to fall off, and then uh, the Astros seized the opportunity. Let, let, let me ask you. Because we talk about it here because I'm old school. You know, when the Brewers were in the American League and the Astros were in National League, did, right. you, did you like that switch? Uh, me personally, I did. I, you know, the Orioles had a rivalry with the Brewers in 1982. It came down to the final four games of the season. I remember we won the that. first yep. three. I remember, and we lost yeah. game four. Robin Yount went ballistic on Jim Palmer. So we kind of had a, a kind of little, you know, a little rivalry with the, the Brewers at one time. But, uh, you know, look, I think it's kind of worked out now. I know Astro fans had hated it from the beginning. But now they're like, you know what? I like being in the American League. So I know a lot of Astro fans that have turned. And they love being in the American League. And I think for the most part, Milwaukee fans love being in the National League. So I think it's helped both teams, actually. Yeah, you get, yeah. I, I was there in 81, then the Brewers played the Yankees in the playoffs when that was the strike season, you know, the first season right. winner against the second. So uh, there's another team uh, back then that had some great ball players, man. They, they were they were another oh. force to reckon with in uh, Milwaukee, the Brew Crew. Well, if you think about it, um, especially like in the 70s and 80s, the dominant teams back then were like the Reds, the Pirates, the Royals, the Orioles, to some extent the Brewers. Yep. And now you look like 30, 40 years later, those teams are almost irrelevant because of the economics of the game. But that's right. when baseball was really, that's probably the last time when baseball was at its purest was it didn't matter what payrolls were or anything like that. Right. It just mattered, you know, what you produced year in and year out. Yeah. And you can see it, man. All those teams, all of them were small market teams. And they were dominant teams in the second. And you can put the Oakland A's in there too, right? The yeah. Oakland A's won three World Series. So yeah. there you have it. Yeah, and then, and let me tell you that. And then of course the strike in '94 killed killed the right. Milwaukee uh, Montreal Expos. And if that doesn't happen, 
they're bringing the champ. They they would have probably won a championship out there. They probably would have. I mean, they absolutely were destroyed Yan- that by that. Been, yep, the Yankees and uh, Expos were on the verge of meeting each other in the World Series back then, because the Yankees were all on top of the American League East, and the, the the Expos were on top of the National League East, and it was it was great. That they yeah, just killed yeah, it was it was a great time of baseball. It really was, man. I I, I love that era, and that's why I try to uh, I try to interview a lot of players from that era because those are the guys that I really like to interview. Nice. No, oh, you got a you got a question there? No oh, question. I no. thought I thought you had some. <laughs> no question. Yeah, so that I I miss the old school, you know, days, and you know that's when the the seats weren't expensive. You were able to bring the family out and enjoy yourself, and now, and now it's like, what is it about? If you bring a family four, you spend almost four or five hundred dollars before it's all said yeah. and done. Yeah. And it's still the best value in sports. So, I mean, yeah, you know, that right. tells you the economics of things. So, uh, yeah, baseball has definitely changed a lot through the years, for sure, no doubt. Yeah, and it's not even, you know, when I grew up in Brooklyn and played Little League, it, it little, a lot of Little League is, is not around in a lot of cities, a lot of the Little League baseball. So, you don't you don't see it as much. You definitely don't. In fact, uh, when I was at the uh, Cal Ripken experience yesterday, I was telling my girlfriend how, like, um, you know, when we were kids, we didn't have batting cages and pitching machines and all these cages that they have now. But the ironic, the, the ironic thing about it is it was our generation was like, look, we need to set this up for our kids so that they can have batting cages and all this stuff. Right. And now it turns out that most of our kids don't even play baseball. <laughs> They certainly don't play like the way we played it when we were younger. So right. they have all these advantages that we never had as a kid, but nobody plays it. Yeah, it's aluminum bats instead of wooden, and who wants this? And somebody, let me tell you, we're gonna we're gonna miss the little league World Series watching these kids play because a lot of them play with heart. I mean, oh yeah, I don't know if you've ever been to one, but man, it's awesome. I've been to one and. Uh, I tell you, it's one of the most fun times I ever had on a, in a baseball stadium. Uh, we were actually playing drinking games out in center field. Every time uh, <laughs> Lip Su Yang on the Thailand team threw a wild pitch, we were doing shots. That's great. <laughs> so now what do they have? A lot of, a lot of tournaments up in uh, in Baltimore too, right? Over there at Cal What's that? In Cal Ripken's complex there, they have a lot of tournaments. I guess. Oh, uh, man, he's got a great little complex out in Aberdeen, man. He's got, like, a little miniature uh, Wrigley Field, a miniature Camden Yards, uh, a miniature Fenway. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot down over there, man. He's definitely on that. Wow. I gotta, we got to go check that out when we're allowed. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we, Cal's, yeah uh, we've seen the – yeah, He's a great Baltimorean, man. Yeah, we've seen the Iron Birds because uh, I worked the uh, security for the Staten Island Yankees over there at the stadium, so – we we've seen the minor right. league teams come over into uh, Brooklyn at the yeah. Cyclones and all that other stuff. Sure. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Maybe next year, if uh, they're playing it, maybe next year we could go and uh, do a uh, go to Williamsport. I have never been there. No. Oh uh, man, you will love it, man. Where, uh, where is it? Is a where great is it? stadium, man. Yeah, and I'm PA. just amazed that it's you know for the most part it's free. I'm like you know I'd be charging these. You know these kids' parents, man. I'd be I'd be charging them hand over fist. I'd be making money off of these people. But you know that's the even the greater appeal of it is that uh, the Little League World Series is free. You know you can literally go out in center field and find yourself a little spot to sit down and and watch you know some really good Little League baseball. I mean these kids are like you know they're they're phenomenal fourteen year old kids. I mean they're they're amazing. Yeah, it's great. And uh, then. Uh... That, that 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 hurt, you know, the COVID hurt that economy over there because you had so many people traveling in and staying at these hotels yeah, it, and whatever it else. devastated and, everything. It's yeah. The minor leagues, the, the, the college, little leagues. I mean, it's 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 been terrible for sure. We just got to rise above it, baby. Yeah, and, uh, and hopefully baseball does do that for us. That's right. That's right. Be a patriot, play baseball, watch baseball. I'm all about it. Yeah, I I can't wait. I I let me tell you something. If there was if there was a thing where I could, uh, you know, try to be 
a comeback player at my age, that, that would be funny. <laughs> Right on. I got you. Uh, 53 years old. The guy's taking the field. Somebody get him, somebody get him some oxygen. <laughs> well, I talked to Bill Lee a couple weeks ago, and Bill Lee is winning baseball games in his 70s. He's the, he's the oldest professional baseball player to win a game. Seriously? And, uh, Where at? He said he will, he said he will put his uh, record up against Satchel Page any day. Oh, wow. Where, and where's he throwing yeah, ball, ball this guy? What's that? Where, where? Who was he pitching with or playing with? Oh, he's, you know, like these uh, these professional baseball teams all around the world, man. He, he barnstorms and plays all around the world. And, uh, yeah, he he plays everywhere. He makes his own bats. I mean, the guy is absolutely wow. out of his mind. I mean, he is one of the greatest interviews I've ever had in my life. If you haven't checked it out, you need to go to my YouTube page. It's the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network. And uh, if you're a baseball fan, a true baseball fan, you need to sit down and listen to my interview with Bill Lee. Oh, and definitely. it is unbelievable. The best line of the night was probably, he said, uh, oh, yeah, Carlton Fisk, he's a great guy. He's really slow and methodical, though. Uh, when, when he's on his deathbed, it's going to take him three years to die. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I just thought it was the greatest line ever, man. Bill Lee is absolutely out of this out of this world. I mean, he is definitely in orbit, man. So, yeah, check out the YouTube page and uh, the Facebook page, and we're so glad to have you in here, man. And I'm glad that you uh, reached out to me because a lot of podcasters don't do that when they come in here, and they think it's just some place where they're going to leave their material and everybody's going to gather around, and it just doesn't work that way in here. But we appreciate having you, and uh, – yeah, man, keep pushing, keep striving, man, because we're all striving for the same thing. Yes, and we want to thank you for calling in. Like I said, we're, we're one big happy family looking to give people the content, the entertainment, the laughter, the tears uh, that goes with the sport of baseball. Absolutely, man. It feels like a good partnership. I enjoy having you in the room, and thank, uh, you, thank you for letting me be on your show. Jake, thank you so much, and we appreciate it. And you, you are welcome anytime to call in, anytime, my friend. Okay. And we'll compare and I'll probably I'm going to probably return to fame. I'm going to have you do one of my shows in a, in a, in a couple of weeks. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Ladies and, and what's gentlemen. Your, what's your partner's name again? This is Carl. Hello. What is it again? Carl. Carl. Okay. Yeah, make sure that uh, – is Carl in the room too? Bring Carl in the room, man. Make sure, make sure I know Carl. All right. You got it, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Jake Robinson from the Let's Talk Baseball Podcast Network. Let's give it up for Jake and his crew over there. Great job, man. Thanks, fellas. Have a great night. You All too. Right. Thank you. That's a that's a great man. That's a great man right there. That, I got to get you into that room. It's it's a great room. Uh, with, with a lot of great interviews, I saw the one with Ken Singleton. Awesome. Great guy. Thank you again, Jake. And uh, his crew out there, thank you uh, for tuning in with us. And welcoming us in, and we welcome you here. And uh, we're going to do great things together. Let's let's get together. Hopefully, when this this crap is over, maybe next year we could go out to uh, Myrtle Beach and uh, hook up and do a big uh, baseball show out there. As a uh, we could do a joint forces uh, network and uh, have fun with it. So, what do you say? You want to? That was so great. I, I could you. End the night on a great note like that, man. Let's do it. I'm not ready. I still got stuff to say. Oh, my God. Yeah, we got another 10 minutes left. Go ahead. Know. Hit me with it. All right. So, so last week, how I uh, dared off to uh, go and uh, play some ball. Oh, team, yeah. What happened? So, team-wise, individual-wise, I had a good night. But team-wise, we lost 9-4. to four. But individual-wise... Okay. I got up to the plate twice, got two singles. I was uh, going to try to uh, advance if uh, the guys and girls behind me uh, moved me along so I could score, but they didn't. They uh, did some uh, fielder's choice and hitting the ground and hitting um, and getting double play. So how was how was the field? Otherwise, it was uh, no. The field was good. It was the all good. Field was good. Uh, went to. Uh, before the game started, the commissioner came over to the league uh, from the league, came up to us and said that 
in the middle uh, on the field of play. We don't have to wear the mask. Only outside of play, which was good. So he knows that you're running in the, uh, the temperature and it's hot outside. He's not obligating you to wear it because right. there's no way you could play with the mask over your face. Outside, off the field, that you're not in the game, then, yeah, you have to uh, have it on, okay. which was good. Um, it was a good night. Um, I thought uh, with the field would um, be underwater with the rain that we had the previous week, but it was so dry that it soaked it up. It was not even uh, an issue. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was great. When's, it, when's your next game? We have two games, actually two days set up for next week, Tuesday and Thursday, a doubleheader, but they're calling for rain, so who knows? They're calling for rain every day. Yeah, so who knows? Especially when it's humid out. Yeah, uh, the rain that we had on Friday was bad. I don't know. uh, I was still on vacation last week when we had the uh, torrential uh, rainstorm. I don't know if uh, where you were, but it was. Oh, yeah, a little of. Somewhat of a tornado. Oh, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. So yeah, we just had the rain and the wind, but uh, it was pretty nasty. But uh, it was good to get out there and uh, see my teammates. And uh, yeah, they said just play ball and uh, have fun, which is good. I miss playing ball. I gotta get back in the swing of things. You know, and gotta uh, get to the cages. Our uh, our pitcher, who is on our team, he's actually older than you. He's been our pitcher for uh, – this is our fourth year in the league, so he's been our pitcher for four years. So he's uh, – I like, I like playing right field. That's my position with number 31 wearing. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was great to get it out there. Uh, it was muggy, though, so when I oh, – uh, I can imagine when yeah, you left here. Yeah, so when I uh, got back to the house, taking off my jersey, the shirt that I had on underneath was soaked. That's uh, – Think about playing uh, enjoy this weather right now. It's, it's horrendous. Um, at the end of, I, I, let me tell you something. It, it, it was hot so far this summer. It's been really humid. Yeah, it's been. It's bad. And we haven't had snow up here in a couple of years. So uh, everybody keeps saying, "What else could happen in 2020?" Here comes three feet of snow. Who knows? Maybe an alien, the Starship Enterprise, is going right. to come down. Right. We'll have you know, like space balls, whatever. Right. right. I want to give a shout out to uh, anyone. Tomorrow night, uh, the Elvis Tribute, uh, Richie uh, Santo, will be at the Brick House in Sayreville, New Jersey. Two shows tomorrow, 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Come down, watch one of the best. Of course, I will be there. I'll come down with great food, a little uh, rock and roll, and uh, have a good time with your family and friends. And... uh, I'm looking forward to the exhibition games this weekend with the Mets and Phillies, and you get the season started next week. Like I said, uh, next Wednesday, the 22nd, we'll do a season special. Uh, we'll give you uh, who's playing who, the rotation, uh, the starting pitches, and all that other stuff. And that's about it. And don't forget August 21st down in Brooklyn at the Schnitzel House. Uh, Come one, come all. Uh, I will let you know what the uh, the other meetings happening with the, taking the show on the road, and it should be a really good time. Uh, what time we got? Yeah, go ahead. Sh- uh, close it down there, my man. All right. So we want to thank our guest caller for calling in, Jake from South Carolina. Yeah. Also, we want to thank the guys in the back. Ruben, Monk, Gino, for every week that they put on with us with the audio and the lighting and the vision, everything that they yeah. do. So we are on air f- with you guys for two hours. And also, I want to give out a sh- local shout-out. For all you p- fans who live in the area, go to Massimo's or Friendly's in Robbinsville. If they have outdoor dining, go out there. Yeah, support, Give them some, uh, support everybody, Support please. everybody, because without indoor dining, they need you to uh, give some money. So I want to also give a shout-out to uh, John Gonzalez, the Sports Authority uh, group on Facebook. Thank you for the uh, compliment. Thank you again, Jake. And what else have we got? That's about it. 
Uh, just we'll support everybody. Yeah, and, just yeah. our normal guys. Uh, Danny who called in tonight, and hopefully, we'll yeah, hear. our bu- buddy uh, Matt Soriani. Matt. Yep. Hopefully, we'll Soriani see you next says, week. So tune into that. Uh, Danny from Brooklyn, our uh, Brooklynites, our Jersey night, uh, people from Staten Island, and all around the globe on HamiltonRadio.net, right here, Iron Horse Film Studios. I am your host, Al Angeletti, my co-host. Colin McGlasky. New Jersey, always stay classy. Good night.